What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we have said quite a bit on the Black Adam uh, movie. Looking back, these were some of the first times that I listened to our episodes, like just wanted to see or listen to what we said. And was it fair? And it was 100% completely fair. Some of the thoughts I felt I had to say about Black Adam. Um, But a lot of news has uh, been happening with uh, DC. Now called DCU. Which I, which I always thought was the better name. I don't understand. I never understood the DC Extended Universe. I, I never understood what that meant. But now it's DCU Studios. And they've hired two gentlemen by the name of James Gunn. And what's the other guy's name? Saffron? Peter Saffron. Yeah. Brian, could do you know a little bit about Peter Saffron? I, I have no idea who this guy is. First off, they did something that we kind of predicted, which is the rumor was they wanted their Kevin fight. And the report is, look, this is a non-story to me, but the report is they did offer Kevin Feige the job first. Okay, listen, <laughs> of course, that that's a five second conversation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you, you call and you say, is there any chance here? And Kevin says, nope. And you say, okay. But you do that. That's not a story to me. You yeah. try. But we had suggested way back, go back in the archives and find it. This idea of having two people yeah. and not one always made a little more sense. The idea that you would have more of a business person and a creative person. And that is exactly what they did. They brought yeah. in someone whose experience is as a producer, as someone who kind of like gets things off the ground, gets budgets made, and gets people paid, and gets people. And they, and then, you know, whatever we think of James Gunn, we'll talk more about that. But James Gunn is a super nerd in the genre. He is. And so you yeah. get a guy who's very well versed in comic book lore and um, to kind of help out. And they're going to team these guys up and we'll get into the pros and the cons of that. Peter Saffron. So, the other thing that really stands out is Peter Saffron is a is he's an insider when it comes to Warner Brothers. So his production company has had a deal with Warner Brothers for a long time, um, and just and just re-upped recently. Um, so this is somebody who is not from the outside coming in. As remember, Dan Lin was supposed to be. Dan Lin was an outsider. Dan Lin would have had to come in, give up his production deal and join Warner Brothers. Peter Saffron is the opposite of that. So he has already been in the DCEU. He was he had a producing credit on Shazam, Aquaman, Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad, not Suicide Squad. Uh, and then he's also worked with Warner Brothers in other genres, like The Conjuring. That's a pretty popular sort of low budget horror movie um, line. So he is kind of like, he's more similar to like Michael DeLuca, right? Like we mentioned DeLuca, you know, he's now was at, Am was at MGM. Now he's at Warner Brothers. He's done some comic book stuff, but he does everything. Yeah. Saffron's like DeLuca light. Let's call it that. So that that's that's what he's there to do is basically, yeah, write checks, keep people happy, you know, keep the line, keep the machine moving. Like, yeah, that he is very much the business end of this operation because James Gunn, as we know, is not that. That's not where his expertise has has ever been. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout outs to BlackRock. You know, he's mentioned this uh, uh, idea of having two guys before as well in the comment session. And also, shout outs to him. Um, Brian, what, what what were your thoughts? Were you surprised at this, uh, at this news, at uh, James Gunn and Peter Saffron being named co-CEO of, of, of this? 
not surprised that they were two, not surprised at the DNA of who they are. Maybe a little surprised that James Gunn is the person on the creative side. But this kind of says to me, when you factor in Saffron as a Warner Brothers guy, and James Gunn is now more entrenched as a DC guy than yeah. a Marvel guy. He's wrapping up his Marvel commitments with the Guardians holiday special and Guardians 3. What it says to me is that nobody on the this is something we speculated nobody on the outside was going to take this job or at least nobody of the quality that they were looking for was willing to take this job and we can get into why but at the end of the day these are two guys who are already in house man i don't man. think that's a coincidence at all that that's man. where we ended up brian this is a possible thing that may have occurred when that call to Kevin Feige was made. Maybe Kevin Feige put in a good word for James Gunn. Possibly. If it wasn't me, because you, as you heard lately, Kevin Feige said, you got some work to still do, <laughs> but, once, but once that's done, I'll be the first in line. I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige put in a good word for him to get take that, man. So you brought up something which I think is really topical, which is as the financial details of this came out, you texted me and you said, for your deals. And you kind of were like, what does that really mean? Like, Explain that to the people, because I think it is a great point in the context of where DC is that that's an odd length of term for these yeah. two guys. To me, there isn't a long window for you to make this work. I think it's more of you got four years to, to, sh to show what you can do. And if in those four years, we're not at a level, I think, where we want to be, as compared to where Marvel is, because straight up, Brian, they want to compete with Marvel. They want that cake. They know they can get it. They just need the right people that can bring that to, to, to life. And Brian, I don't care what nobody say. I'm throwing my 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 name in, in, in the in the in the hat. Call me <laughs> and we'll talk. Um so this is just an opportunity, Brian. Four-year opportunity to get to see what you can do. Because I'd imagine how many movies you got in these four years, Brian, for you to do two, three, maybe. What will those movies be? Does those include Man of Steel 2? Mm. Does that include Black Adam? Hmm. Does it include, well, we already know that, I don't know if it's already been confirmed that it's still in play, Brian, but there's rumor that this movie is still going on, which is that J.J. Abram, ta Coat movie. Yeah. I, I don't know about all that. I think that's a mistake, but we can, that's a separate show. So what... Will James Gunn be doing in these four years? We don't know yet. All we know of what the possibilities are. For certain, we're getting the Man of Steel 2. And now we're talking about Green Lantern a series with John uh, Stewart. So, Brian, I don't know, but let's see. What do you think? So I, am I in the right ballpark of what's going on? Yeah, I think you've hit on one of the Achilles heels of this whole operation, which is that, so if you just do the math, and Kevin Feige very playfully and very directly reminded James Gunn that between the holiday special and the, and the post-production of Guardians 3, he is committed to Marvel until the summer of next year. Why is that important? Because his deal with DC is an exclusive deal. It says James Gunn can no longer go back and forth between the two universes as he has been doing. 
So when you have a four-year deal that starts in November, what James Gunn can't, like, just from a practical standpoint, he has major time commitments and creative commitments to the Guardians movie for at least another six, seven months. Yeah. It's really closer to like a three-year deal in yeah. terms of his creative energies. Now, we know he's he's a pretty prolific guy. You know, he's able to kind of multitask a bit, but his yeah. full focus cannot be on DC until the middle of next year. Yeah. We also know that DC has a pipeline of things that have to, well, have to get resolved, let's say. So in the case of like Aquaman 2, Flashpoint, Shazam 2, these are movies that are in the can or in deep in post-production that, yeah. that, you know, yes, they could technically <clears throat> be canceled and written off, but the odds are, as we've seen, the studio has been fighting tooth and nail to keep Flashpoint alive, despite having all the ammunition you probably could need to cancel it. So it kind of tells you that they want something out there. Well, that's your 2023 slate. So year one of this four-year partnership is kind of already locked, right? At least from a what we're going to get content-wise. So I want to step back and I want to say, I do think David Zasloff did at least one thing smart here, which I think we've we given him a lot of grief recently. But he did something that I think was at least savvy, which is he has a he has a producer guy who's not who knows the political machine inside WB. That's a smart move. Somebody who's not going to come in, stomp around, break glass, make a lot of enemies right out of the gate. This is a mm -hmm. weird and, studio. And that's and Saffron. And okay. Saffron. Right. Okay. So Saffron's already been in the machine. That means the rank and file. That means DeLuca, Dwayne Johnson. Everybody knows this guy, right? Because he's been on some of these productions. That is definitely a positive. Anyone, you know, whatever we think Dan Lin might have done, that would have been an interesting cultural thing to watch because he would have come in from the outside with no alliances and preconceived relationships. And we would have seen. So Saffron gives you that. I do think having Gunn as the creative is a good move from a publicity standpoint. James Gunn is pretty good on social, well, <laughs> with notable exception, pretty good on social media. We know what he was not good at in the past, but he's very good behind the microphone, like at Comic-Con. He's very good on the promotional circuit. This is a guy who can talk a good game about mm -hmm. what the studio is doing. And I do <clears throat> think that is very important. Like. Walter Hamada was never a guy who was out in and amongst the nerds, making them feel good about the next production. Mm -hmm. James Gunn will do that. Whether we like him or not, or think he's a one trick pony, what doesn't <clears throat> matter. He's very good at that. And so I think Zasloff did recognize of the options on the board. I need a guy who's gonna get the PR side of this headed in the right direction. So I think that's the best thing that we got out of this. Here's my question to you. Are they really in charge? Do you believe that these that the buck will stop with these two guys? And we'll break it down. But given who else we know is operating in the stable right now, are these guys really going to get the Kevin Feige level of authority going forward? Do you believe that? And you're referring to The Rock? I'm referring to, well, not just The Rock. I'm referring to Seven Bucks Production, right? His whole machine, him, Bo Flynn, Hiram Garcia, his ex-wife. The satellite universe around The Rock is one fiefdom. I'm also referring to Todd Phillips running this Joker world. I'm referring to Matt Reeves running the Batverse. <coughs> Greg Berlanti running this TV. I don't know what it's going to be with Green Lantern, but having done all the CW show, that's what I'm asking. Do you yeah, think that yeah, these yeah. guys are going to, I mean, is this the one ring to rule them all? Are they going to unify all these? <sighs> the hope would be for James Gunn to 
rally the troops and go away on a retreat. <laughs> the Kevin Feige retreat. <laughs> and get on the same page. If they, re I mean, what's the challenge here? What's, what's the challenge that is being put in their faces, Brian? What is it? What's the challenge? Zaslav wants to be like Marvel. What, is, what does that mean? He wants their success. Zaslav doesn't know that world. He doesn't know how to go about it. Right. So he's putting people in places where he feels that they can get him there because of what he thinks he owns in this IP. So I would think that would be the first step. If not, Brian, the worst is yet to come. I think it's that. I think I, 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 I feel just, like that too. Yeah, I can't. I can't <laughs> see it. I just so I can't see. So we put these together. I think that Warner Brothers has handed out too many special deals to go back on those now. Like, can you like? We just saw a very public display. Because Dwayne Johnson was wants everyone to know that Walter Hamada blocked Henry Cavill for God knows how long from coming back to Superman. So what did Dwayne Johnson do? He just went right around that position. Mm -hmm. He went to Michael DeLuca and he said, well, you're, you're just as powerful. You're more powerful than Walter Hamada. You make this happen. And it happened. Why, why would that now not happen? It, like... I can't, like, we've talked about, this is really sort of a hybrid state of DC, Black Adam part six, because we're coming off that film. There is no chance, and I, you and I have criticized James Gunn plenty on this show, but I know James Gunn would not have let Black Adam go to theater the way it looked and sounded. That I know. Because James Gunn's a better writer than that. He's a, he's a better geek than that. He's a better editor than that. He would yeah. not have looked at that finished movie and said, yup, that's the blockbuster we need. Okay, so what if he said that to Dwayne Johnson in post-production? Are you telling me that The Rock's going to just play ball with that? After he didn't play ball with anybody for the past? We can't see it. So he's probably going right around James Gunn going to Michael DeLuca, going to David Zasloff and say, I know what's best for this character. You tell that little twerp, stay in his lane and leave me alone. Okay. I don't want to single out Dwayne Johnson in this. Todd Phillips is like going to pull a James Cameron on the studio. He's like, where's your billion dollar R-rated movie? I got one. I got yeah. the only one. I got the <laughs> all-time R-rated movie. You're going to tell me I can't do a musical in Joker 2 if I want to? Just telling him that. James Gunn, Peter Saffron? Nope, I don't see it. Yeah. Matt Reeves is like, my, you know, we'll see. Maybe the, I mean, they're making a push for the Batman to get some Oscars. Let's say we get some nominations, maybe, maybe a couple of wins and sound or something like that. Matt Reeves is like, I have an Academy Award nominated, Academy Award winning film around the Batman. You're going to tell me I got to play ball in some combined universe that you guys want to do james gunn you're a lighthearted guy my batman's very serious I, i'm not i'm not dancing with how's this gonna work pablo Oof, i mean you marvel doesn't a lot have of... any of that marvel doesn't have any of that no this 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 world is so discombobulated is um is unbelievable this is discombobulated i don't often use that word you don't often use that word brian on every, on every day this is the most discombobulated thing i've ever seen yeah 
like there was a there, there was a I forget what baseball team it was was it the I feel like it was one of the Yankees from teams from the 70s that won a World Series but it was like they described the team as like it was like 25 25 men 25 buses right like they <laughs> like they couldn't stand each other to where they were like I can't even be on the same bus with these two. <laughs> they somehow made it work on the field but they hated each other so this is what it feels like it's like one studio but 25 buses you know <laughs> bringing these people around because because the studio has allowed it right that's not on gun that's not on saffron but honestly it's not even on these individual creators because they've been promised something they're all signed to different contracts yeah so you can't like you can't hate on dwayne johnson matt reeves or todd phillips for then saying like wait a minute wait a minute you signed us to multi-million dollar deals to do a thing and now you want us to what like join a family thing like that that's not how hollywood works that yeah. that i you know so i i hope these guys <clears throat> are able to give us something a little more unifying but i don't know if it's going to come from what we already have i think it's going to have to come from just new stuff like stuff we haven't seen yet um and yeah. i don't really know what that is I mean, I, 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 I have high hopes for Blue Beetle. Uh, I do too, but I mean, that's already been made. Yeah. I think, to me, I think Superman is the great. That's the one to watch. 